One of the accusations that was hurled at the Lord during this time in his life was, this is not the carpenter's boy. Joseph, a just man, the guardian of Eden, the spouse of the Virgin Mary, one of my BFFs, that's me. So I want to put it before today, Joseph the carpenter. This is actually very exciting to hear. I don't know if you know, but Pope Francis was inaugurated on the Solemnity of St. Joseph, March 19th. And then over the summer, he confirmed a, a prophecy that was begun by Benedict, which added Joseph's name to all the Eucharistic prayers. If you notice, we've been talking about Joseph a lot more in the Eucharist, and that's why. And in terms of our love here, it's like the word in your A, which is in your Matthew, which means uh, Matthew is the gospel in which we find out a lot about St. Joseph. That's why he's been in the gospel a lot recently. And so last Sunday, we heard arguably the most popular or most known story of St. Joseph. The angel appeared to him when he found Mary pregnant with a child, seeking to, you know, said, because you was a just man, wanting to divorce her quietly. But the angel Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take care of your wife in your home, for the child is of the Holy Spirit. And you are the enemy of Jesus. You will save his people from their sins. And then it says, you woke and you did as the angel Lord commanded. So St. Joseph, we have a beautiful statue of St. Joseph. And I would like to point out some images because I know kids kind of daydream during my holidays and look at everything else. So this statue of St. Joseph, if you ever wonder why um, he has the lilies, you often see Joseph with lilies in imagery. And it's from a prophecy in Isaiah uh, which says, The just man shall flourish like a lily. So it lily though is a symbol of, uh, of Joseph, the just man. I want to get a little theological here. I wonder if you can classify a friend of the children's topic, so I don't have some theology in my brain to explore. So, just to just me, if I ask you, do you think Joseph thought Mary committed adultery? Do you think Joseph thought Mary committed adultery? Most would probably say yes. Why is that? Joseph is second year of That opinion actually was first proposed in the third century. There's a, a legend called the Proto Gospel of James, which had that kind of take on it. And St. this actually very affected St. Augustine. And this is the reason why most of us actually think that here in America, that St. Augustine was uh, one of the instances behind a lot of Protestant theology. So this is the only opinion in Protestant theology uh, based on Augustine. And so this our culture, this is the kind of the proposed kind of theory of our culture. But the reality is it doesn't really jive with scripture. And what do I mean? Well, we know one thing about Joseph, one adjective, is that he was a just man. And because he was just, he wanted to divorce Mary quietly. Now, this word just, it was one of the greatest compliments you could ever give to somebody. Uh, to be just, justice was, it was a, an attitude of God. And to be just that you were perfectly faithful to the covenant. That you had this utter fidelity to the covenantal promises. And so to call somebody just was to say you are like God. And that you are so faithful to the promises. And so as we know, the, you know, the law, if someone was called an adultery, the law was death by stoning. And so Joseph really thought Mary had committed adultery. Though it might have been merciful to divorce her, divorce her quietly, it would not have been just. It would not have been a fulfillment of the law. And so what's another possibility? Well, St. Jerome in the, in the fourth century said, well, maybe he was just confused. You know, he, he believed in her moral uprightness and was just kind of confused. How did this all happen? What am I supposed to do? And was just kind of dumbfounded by it all. So I'll just step back. Again, that doesn't really jive though with the concept of justice. You know, you can't be just and like dumb at the same time. So the third possibility, and this is actually the one that is most kind of held in our own tradition, or by theologians, by the doctors of the church, St. Bernard, St. Thomas Quine, all the way up to JP2. And that's Mary told Joseph about the angel. And she told him about the child. And he believed her. 
and he was as a just man, so in all of that mystery, and he realized that if he were to enter into this mystery, it would be like him setting up his carpenter shop in the holy of holies in the temple. And so he was overcome with this holy reverence, this holy fear, this wonder and awe of what God was doing, and decided on the path to step back. That Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my house. And this is why the angel comes and says, not do not be confused, but do not be afraid, just not be afraid. No. And that's such an amazing reality of Christmas that God comes and he wants us to be part of his plan. He wants us to be part of his plan. Now, as a kid say, that's cray cray. That's crazy. That he wants us as part of his plan. So my love, my devotion to St. Joseph, it actually began, I saw a picture when I was in Italy. It looked kind of like this. It's not the exact one. But it was an image of the death of St. Joseph. The death of St. Joseph. And he got married and Jesus by his side. And I remember praying and thinking to myself, man, I want to die like him. I want to die with Jesus there by my side. And then as my prayer went on, I realized, all right, if I want to die with him, I have to start living like him. And that's when I really put him as a model. Like, all right, what can he teach me? And so I began to look at him, you know, what would he say to me? And the reality is, you know, in the gospel, he never uttered a single word. But there's, some, there's a, a phrase that's attributed to him constantly in the gospel. And it's this, is that he awoke and did as the angel commanded him. Kind of heard it twice today, that he awoke and did as the angel commanded him. We heard it last week and it's a couple other places as well. It was very powerful my own kind of vocation discernment. Because, you know, it didn't say that he woke and then, you know, instead of laying off and saying, well, what will make you the most money? What can I buy the most gummy berries to satisfy my happiness and my needs? And, you know, all, he wasn't like laying all these out. He was like, no, here's the will of God. Who am I doing? He woke and just did as he needed to do and commanded it. And then he's also the, the picking thing of, of chastity as well, the picking of the happy death, the, a holy death. Because it seemed like his, his, his love, his fire, his passion, his energy was so utterly devoted, singularly, to serving Jesus and Mary. And all the gospel, all we hear is he, he just did with all his passion, all the energy, and served Jesus and Mary. So that's why he's a patient in a chapter as well. And so, I'd encourage you maybe, maybe to look at him. You know, we, maybe you've seen the album already by now. But we look, you know, you can look at him instead of looking at him. And I think most of us at least have a small bit of that same justice. That we all, in some, at least a small way, know what God wants from us. You know, we're here because I think we know God wants something from us. And we have an idea of what that is. To some extent. And so we can pray, you know, pray for His holy reverence, holy wonder, all His spirit, and the fact that God has invited you into His plan for the world. And that's what the Christmas miracle is, that He wants you. And he has a plan for you for the salvation of the world. And then we can pray for his passion, for his passion, for his zeal. That we might serve Jesus and Mary all of our hearts, all of our souls, each and every day of our life. I'm going to end more for the sentimental type. I wrote a, a poem to St. Joseph a number of years ago. And so it's a, it's a prayer, it's a sonnet actually. But I figured out this. Read you, you get a little, little bit of Father Wayne here. So, but this is my prayer to St. Joseph. O Joseph, just and chaste, God's chosen man, God's son to Father Christ and spouse to be, and from your virgin loving heart began to flow your fiat, silent, faithful, free. God carved your cross in poverty and shame. But you surrender yourself unceasingly. A man poured forth the then he thus became a rock for Mary and divinity. As Jesus watched you work till day was done, on you I gaze to gain humility. You soar and splinter, born for Christ, your son, is mine and burden none of the chest. Your heart of bronze and heart of love my case. Make my heart like yours most chaste.